Hello, Gen Count Tribe. In this lecture, we are now relating um, our equilibrium constant and delta G of reaction. So basically, we're getting, you know, back into this notion of equilibrium. Um, so, you know, we have a couple equations that, that relate these two. Um, the first one is as such that the delta G of a reaction is equal to negative RT, the natural log times the natural log of our equilibrium constant. So, so there's our equilibrium constant. We have our delta G. Remember, that's going to be in terms of kilojoules per mole. We have our temperature, which is still in Kelvin with all thermodynamics. And remember, with our R value, we have, you know, two possibilities, you know, as far as R is concerned. Um, and so we want to use that thermodynamic R, or that 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So there's our first equation in relating delta G to our equilibrium constant. And what we find is that if delta G of the reaction is negative, this basically means that KEQ is greater than 1. Or that products are favored at equilibrium, right? If delta G is negative, that indicates a spontaneous process going from starting materials to products. And in terms of K, that would mean that we would have a lot more product than we do starting material. And so we would have a K much greater than, than one. We can also say then, you know, the flip side of that, that if, you know, delta G is positive, that means that our equilibrium constant is less than one, or that starting material uh, or starting materials are favored at equilibrium. So that's the idea between delta G and K is just kind of saying, you know, the sign of delta G is telling you what's favored. If delta G is negative, that means we have a spontaneous transformation over to products um, and products are favored at equilibrium. If our delta G is positive, then we have the opposite, that it's not a spontaneous process and our delta G or our starting materials are actually favored. The other equation that we have to, to worry about then is this one. And so here we have now the addition of Q. So, so we really have, you know, kind of, you know, two to processes when we're looking at K, are we, you know, at equilibrium and talking about K or are we not at equilibrium and we're talking about Q? So here is delta G, so this is still kilojoules per mole, but this is not at equilibrium. So that's the big difference between the one delta G and the other.
Notice the other delta G has the standard state symbol. And so now that it has a, a different, uh, you know, moniker, not only this idea of temperature 298, one molar, one atmosphere, those ideas, but also that we are at equilibrium. So that's the difference between the two. If we have delta G at standard state, we're at equilibrium. And if we don't have delta G at standard state, then we're not at equilibrium. We're talking about K. Everything else over here is the same as we saw above. We have our R value. We have our temperature in Kelvin. And now we have, you know, our Q or our products over starting material, just like we've done with, with our equilibrium constant. So there's, there's no difference there. And this idea of delta G, the reaction not at standard state, is the thermodynamic proof of basically which direction the equilibrium reaction needs to shift in order to reach equilibrium or when the rate forward is equal to the rate backwards. So that's the important feature is that, that this delta G of reaction is the thermodynamic proof of which way things are going to go. We normally did this just by Q versus K. Um, and so now we're looking at it through a more of a thermodynamic lens um, as far as our delta G. So if our delta G of reaction is negative, that means equilibrium reaction is shifting towards product to reach equilibrium. So that would be our delta G being uh, negative. And then if our delta G of the reaction is positive, that means now that the equilibrium reaction is shifting the opposite direction or it's shifting towards starting materials. to reach equilibrium. You know, we had that in terms of K versus Q as well. If we kind of go back to, to that notion saying that, you know, your equilibrium is shifting to the right or delta G is negative, you know, that's like Q is less than KEQ because of that notion. But if we look at delta G being positive, now we're shifting the other side, we could write it in terms of now, that's like Q being much greater than K and Q. Um, the difference is that Q and K are not technically the thermodynamic proof that we're looking for. It has to be in terms of this notion of delta G. So let's look at an example of these two equations.
So we're looking at a general equilibrium reaction here. We have two sulfur dioxides uh, reacting with O2. to produce two sulfites or sulfur trioxide, um, all of these in the uh, gaseous uh, state. And the Kp for this is equal to 3.4, oops, sorry, Kp. P for this process is equal to 3.4, and this is at 1,000 Kelvin. So for part A, we want to calculate the delta G um, for this reaction at 1,000 Kelvin. So that's part A. Part B, we want to uh, basically prove thermodynamically um, which direction the uh, equilibrium reaction is proceeding if you know one or so a chemist you know mixes basically 13 atmospheres of the sulfur dioxide gas um, 5.9 atmospheres of the O2 gas and 24 atmospheres of the sulfur trioxide gas and heat to 1,000 Kelvin. So those are our two questions. First, we want to calculate delta G of the reaction. B, we want to calculate which way the equilibrium reaction is shifting if we are mixing these, these three different materials. Some are starting materials, some are products. Are we at equilibrium? Or which way is the reaction actually moving to, to reach that equilibrium spot when the rate forward is equal to the rate backwards? So for part A... You know, this is just saying that we have delta G of a reaction and we have an equilibrium constant. So we just want to use the equation that we had before, being a little bit more specific now with K sub P, since this is a pressure equilibrium constant as opposed to the general equilibrium constant. So that Delta G of reaction would be equal to um, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, our R value, times our temperature of 1,000 Kelvin. Don't forget the negative sign out in front of the equation. Times then the natural log of my equilibrium constant, which is that value of, of 3.4. And so I can quickly solve this to end up with a delta G of reaction equal to negative 10,200 joules per mole or negative 10.2 kilojoules um, per mole. Um, and this is telling me that this is spontaneous. And it's also telling me that product is favored at that equilibrium set of conditions. So 
that is basically part A. Pretty straightforward. Just plug into the equation and solve for that delta G of reaction. For part B, um, we're looking for now a delta G of the reaction. We know the delta G of the reaction at equilibrium and we got that from part A right now with the new set of conditions you know which way is reaction progressing you know if at all you know are we at equilibrium maybe we are and that comes from the idea that now we have these different pressures like we have a pressure of our sulfur dioxide to be equal to the 13 atmospheres we have a pressure of our oxygen equal to 5.9 atmospheres and we have a pressure of our um, SO3 to be equal to 24 atmospheres. And so this is the new set of conditions. And so that is really what we're getting at with Q. Right, as far as trying to predict whether it's going to shift one direction or another. So we have our relationship now of the reaction of the equilibrium process, not at standard state. And if we go one step further, we would say that that delta G for that equilibrium reaction is equal to what we solved in part A plus RT times the natural log of Q. But let's be a little bit more specific with Q, right? We would have, you know, that pressure of our SO3 and we would have that squared. That would be all over our starting materials, right? The sulfur dioxide, that quantity squared, times our O2, right? And that's just, you know, back to what Q is, right? And K, right? This idea of the ratio of products to starting materials. So we have all these values and we can now start to, to substitute and now solve. We still have our negative 10,200 joules per mole for our delta G. If you want to put that in kilojoules per mole, that's fine. Just be careful of your R value since it's in joules per mole Kelvin. Our temperature is the 1,000 still. <coughs> now we're plugging in those uh, pressures, right? We have the 24 atmospheres squared for the SO3. We have the uh, 13 atmospheres squared for the SO2. And we have the 5.9 atmospheres for the oxygen as well in the denominator. So there's our expression. And if we, you know, uh, draw it out um, a, a little bit, we could say that our delta G of the reaction is equal to, I'm not changing the, the first half of the equation here, I'm just going to uh, simplify the natural log. And so that ratio 
in the, the natural or in Q would be 0 0.5776. That means now our delta G of the reaction would be the sum of our delta G there at standard state plus a negative 4,563 joules per mole from the, the Q side of the equation. And we end up with a delta G equal to negative 14,700 and 63 joules per mole, or negative 14.763 kilojoules per mole. Since our delta G of the reaction is equal to a negative value, that means that the equilibrium reaction is shifting towards the product to reach equilibrium. And that is part B. So this is known as then that idea of thermodynamic proof. Um, and predicting which way an equilibrium reaction is proceeding. Again, it's, it's proceeding to reach equilibrium where the rate forward is equal to the rate backwards. You can do a check or you can check your value or calc by comparing K and Q. K EQ here was equal to 3.4. Our Q was equal to 0 0.5776 <clears throat> and so that means that Q is less than KEQ and that supports what we have above. This is not the thermodynamic proof. The thermodynamic proof is the delta G but we can maybe give a check just to make sure that our, you know, maybe not numerically the numbers are correct, but just the, the way the reaction is progressing to reach equilibrium, we could just compare Q uh, versus K. So the thermodynamic proof, the delta G of the reaction is negative. That's why it's shifting towards the products to reach that equilibrium state. And that is reinforced by, by the idea that Q is less than KEQ. So that is the relationship between Gibbs free energy um, and equilibrium, whether we're talking about uh, equilibrium reaction that it is physically at equilibrium, or talking about K, big K, or we're not yet at equilibrium, and now we're talking about um, big Q, or the reaction quotient.